All right, you already know what it is. Coach Walter in the house, King of the Beasts. My Zone Monday is coming to you guys. Last Monday, we spoke to you guys about the colors, just basically what the colors do and how they light up. We're gonna be talking about the importance of the strength and cardio and how those colors match up to specific workouts. So let's start off with the strength workout. I know we started off real, you know, basic and speaking about it, but we're gonna go a little bit in depth. When somebody's in a strength workout, mm -hmm. meaning we want them to build some muscle, mm -hmm. muscle building zones, what sort of colors are we seeing in terms of their screen? Um, we're honestly gonna be seeing more on the lower end. So more between 60 and 80%. So blue, green, sometimes gray, depending on how well conditioned you are you're not gonna see yourself spike way too high because those sets, those sets are gonna be very, very short and they're gonna be very, you're not gonna be exerting as much um, aerobic energy. So you're looking more gray, blue, and green. And the most important thing about that strength, like we like to tell the people that come into the iTrain studio is you need to make sure you give your body time to recover and then go into the lift. I don't know whether it's like a fad or a craze that anytime you hand somebody weights or hand something, something, they want to be the quickest to get it done and done. But when we're trying to build muscle, as important as the zones are, important are the reps, meaning you've got to be able to control that weight. You're trying to get stronger, you're not trying to get faster. So part of that is we're not speeding up the heart. Yeah, your heart is working, but everything's under a controlled environment, which is why you see it on that lower end. And we can also use it to control your rest periods. So if you get dropped down to a certain zone, um, that's usually an indicator for you to go. You'll work yourself up and then come back down. So for example, if you're doing a strength workout, we have two sets and after two sets, you go into the yellow and red zone. We know you've overexcited yourself and we need to wait till your heart rate comes down. And we'll see it coming down by the colors going down that way. These colors are actually in the order of how intense it goes. So gradually as you rest, you will gradually come down. Let's talk cardiovascular. Mm -hmm. Cardiovascular is probably one of the people's most favorite because they feel like because they did cardiovascular, they're going fast, they're sweating, mm -hmm. they actually are burning more calories, which is not true. Mm -hmm. In reality, strength training over time burns more calories than cardiovascular. Hour for hour, cardio does burn more calories mm -hmm. than strength training. But over time, now we're gone, the after effects, that caloric burn is predominantly, you know, the strength training is gonna take over time. But cardio, our most favorite, most people's most favorite, because they believe that's the only place where fat gets burnt. But fat actually does get burnt in that area. But for a lot of people in that area, what colors are we seeing in our cardio workouts? Um, for our cardio workouts, or our high intensity training workouts, we're looking at green, yellow, and red. Primarily yellow and red, to okay. get started. Okay, mm -hmm. and now, when, how, in terms of staying in that red zone, mm -hmm. do you stay in that red zone for a long time? Like, is the general rule of thumb of tipping, tapping it? Mm -hmm. Can you stay in forever? Like, generally, you don't want to be in the red zone for more than 30 seconds. Okay. If you're in the red zone for more than 30 seconds, it's our jobs as the trainer to kind of see where your max heart rate is because this, this uh, the monitor adapts to you. So okay. if you stay, say you're training, you're going, and you stay at 100% for more than 30 seconds, yep. then it's going to actually recalibrate and fi actually figure out what your actual max heart rate is and then redo the equation based on what it finds and make it a lot harder to get to those zones. So what you're saying is the belt is continuously thinking, it's continuously monitoring. Mm -hmm. It's not like my Fitbit or my Polar or one of those belts that you put in something, mm -hmm. some of them you don't even put in information and it just takes you. This is me, this is me working out. This is weeks of my workouts and if I'm kicking tail in my workouts, it says you can work harder, let's bump it up so you have to work harder. So that technology is consistently working. Yes, it updates on your birthday and it updates anytime you hit that zone and you get, if, if, if you're hitting 100 consistently, yep. It's gonna re. It's gonna make it that much harder to get there. It should be hard to be in those. Okay. Zones. You should feel like you can't say a word when you're in the red zone. You shouldn't feel like it's easy. Okay. So, like we said, shouldn't feel like it's easy. Next Monday, we're gonna be talking to you about those. You know, the way you're supposed to be feeling in those specific red zones. How you're gonna be feeling in those red zones. And we're also gonna be talking about how the belt decides to adjust, when it decides to adjust, what sort of effort will you be putting in. From myself, King of the Beasts, Coach Wilden, saying peace.